What up, everybody? It's the Sports Chasers Podcast coming to you live and direct. It is currently 7.46 out here in the East, 6.46 out here in the Central Time Zone, 5.46 for my mountain people, 4.46 for those out there on the West Coast driving on I-5. It's the Sports Chasers Podcast. It's the podcast where there's no hot takes, no nonsense when it comes to sports. We tell like it is, tell the truth. What's on the court stays on the court. It's the Sports Chasers Podcast. And this evening, today, we got a lot to get into, a lot to, a lot to delve into tonight. Tonight, we'll be talking about the NBA is, season is currently over. The Milwaukee Bucks are crowned the National Basketball Association champs. They have won for the first time in 50 years, 1971, last time they won. did that but anyway yo as I go right along 1951 is the last time they won with um, Lou Alcinda and Oscar Robinson playing in Milwaukee we'll also talk about um, the MLB power ratings 20 um, rankings there was a couple trades this um, today before the trade, the trade deadline we was off a couple weeks ago, but we'll talk about the NCAA Supreme Court ruling with um, its athletes, its student athletes, quote unquote, air quotes, the NFL expansion draft and um, what it means for the new team, the Seattle Kraken. Um, Deion Sanders beef with the press. Um, where are we uh, with athletes and the media? Is it adversarial or necessary? So we'll talk about that. And also, fresh off the press, the National Football League says, hey, where are we when it comes to this, um, vaccination? So it looks like they'll be penalizing teams if players are not vaccinated and they will have to forfeit teams. But that said, going from my right to left, excuse me, my left to right, can't get it right. James Warren, what's up, brother? The angry one. What's good, family? How y'all doing, man? MMK, what's up? And salute Sports Chasers. We're back for another one. Let's get it. Good to see you. Good to see you, Eric. Good to see you. Mike Mills, what's up? Say what's up to the people. Hello, good people who are still tuned in. How y'all doing today? Y'all good? I'm good. We all good. With that said, last but not least, D-Dub. Say what's up to the people. What's up? What's up, people? What's going on, man? Yo, welcome back. And uh, we're about to do it. Slowed it down today, huh? Yeah. Slowed, Slowed it down. No fumbling and stumbling ish. Don't bump me, yeah. <laughs> the heat, that, 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 that's all, folks. <laughs> the damn heat. It's hot, man. It's, it's hot. hot. It's hot. hot. But what that say, man? We're going to cut the music. DA will not be with us tonight. Um, <laughs> yeah, <guys are> crazy, <laughs> Damn, that's four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you got this. Let's go, baby. <laughs> I need to start charging for phone bings. Oh, that's my laptop. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut off, man. My bad. My bad. Man, a lot of, lot, of, lot of things to get into tonight with sports. We're gonna first start off with the National Basketball Association and with. The Milwaukee Bucks won it for the first time in 50 years, 50 years. The um, Mike Mills says he's dead here on my screen. He has What's a up? public apology. I apologize for what? Go ahead. Oh, D. yeah. We ain't got no apology, like a, man. The hell I look like a, you want me to apologize? Buddha Hosen ain't dropped 50 in game six. That <laughs> shit That shit wasn't drawn up. What am I apologizing for? Tell him, Primo, tell him. Yo, yo, even Doc Rivers got a championship. Yo, man, you 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 insulted that man's intelligence of the game of basketball. Yo. You told him that he needed to change up. Do it and again. He was trash. Do it again. All right. Well, you know, hey, he might, he might, he might just do it. Do it. He, he ain't gonna do it again. But do it again. Yo, man, this is the same guy that you know he had, he he had a land on a on a upward tra tra trajectory. And he was doing, he was doing good. 
No, yeah, y- y'all ain't buying it. It's just, it just like how you stumbled with that word. He stumbled with that Atlanta, <laughs> with that Atlanta Hawks team with Millsap and them boys. Yeah. Yo, man. Hey. I give him his props, man. He uh thank he, you, man. He had a he had a team uh with arguably the best player of the of the playoffs uh-huh. this year. Arguably, arguably, arguably. Uh-huh. And uh his man, um, you know, I want he my survived. damn respect. Yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> yo, man. Shout out to Giannis and the Bucks, man. Uh, again, I didn't have them going no further than Brooklyn, I think. Yeah, but you know, yo, man, they they was yo, man, survival of the fittest, man. They survived, man. They were the last one standing, man. So salute to them, man. That's all. Yo, what man, that, that sounds half hearted, my G. Yo, what, you, what, what, you, what, what you want me to You want me to throw you, up an apple and throw yeah, an apple? Yeah, I want, want you to put some to, respect it, on their damn name. He wants you to cop up. Yo, yo, yo. yo all, y'all, all y'all cats, man, has been. Nah. Yo, y'all, y'all not giving. I don't feel the love for Listen, Milwaukee, okay. man. Let, let, me, I let didn't me break it down. Either. Let me break it down. Let me break it down. I didn't pick them either, just to be clear. Let me let me break it down, right? Yes, I had Phoenix in six. I had them in five, I think, something like that. Yo, man. I give. Credit where credit is due. There you go. And that's it. I don't have yeah, nothing against yeah, you. Smile, smile, I'm angry man. Yeah, smile, man. <laughs> Boy, that's not even in my DNA, kid. Yo, no, yo, like, like y'all started with me with an apology. Like, I ain't gonna apologize. Yeah, yeah, say, you should uh, apologize. You well, can't I, I ain't apologizing. <laughs> well, you I came out, man. Yo, listen, 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 listen. Yo, listen, you listen. was the first one I text like, when I woke up. Listen, because I'm really. And what did I tell you? Let's tell what, what I tell you. Even a broken clock is right twice a day. Right, you're right. You're right. That's right. Let me let Yo. me let me jump in here for a little bit. Let me jump in here for a little bit. So I think all of us after the first two games, I think it was up 2-0, right? Yeah. We pretty much say, yo, this is over. I know no, I said No, 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 no. I said I it, was over. it was over. I don't think we I said, said that, it when Kevin. I seen you the bracket. That tape back. Yeah. I look. Yeah. I said, oh yeah, they in six. I was saying the six before that. I even thought it was gonna go out. seven. I thought it was gonna because I thought both these teams was even. It was so, an even team, but they seven, went on four. Let me let me make, on, uh, let me make all this. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna steal Kev's thunder. All this fake love for Chris Paul came out, and everybody's like, Oh yeah, what? yeah, that's what really what happened. Yeah, Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. And then, Go ahead, and then, and then, and then the tequila they, man, tequila they man, pull, comes to the... they Paul pierced them. They don't love you. You think you Kobe, <laughs> nigga? <laughs> you think you LeBron, nigga? We don't care if you thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh, <laughs> like oh, they did a Draymond Green on the <laughs> Dray- They pulled pissed. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> let me let me just interject. Yeah, you're right. After the first two games, they was ready to put a bronze statue in front of um Phoenix Suns Arena in um uh, in Phoenix, uh for Chris Paul. Um, shout out to Milwaukee. Shout out to the coach, um Coach B. Boonhauser for making some adjustments. Um, if y'all seen, if y'all looked at some of the the things that were done. Um, they started picking up Chris Paul at half court. So what does that do, right? He's got to pick up his dribble and all this stuff. He's got to see the, he, he's he's not able to really create and stuff like that. And I think that was a, a equalizer. And to me, that that was it. They 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 made some really good adjustments. And and before we got on, D-Dub was saying about Giannis, and I won't, and I'll let D-Dub explain about this. You know, Giannis, yo, man, he's, he, he became really unstoppable, especially in game seven. Go ahead, D-Dub. Uh, as I was saying earlier, uh, you know, the whole thing now, you know, we are, we become, uh, uh, how you say, uh, prisoners of the moment. Prisoners of the moment, yep. Right, you know what I'm saying? So I had to take a time to, you know, just two days, just to, after they won the chip, and then a couple of days just to relax and just to understand what's really going on. Giannis is a great player. Is he the greatest? Is he the is he the best player in basketball? That's to be argued. I don't think I want to give him the label of being the best player in basketball just yet. But he is the best player at what he does, and what he does is get to the basket. And he got over that free throw shooting, unlike your man in Philadelphia, Ben Simmons, who he shied away from it. Even with everybody counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Giannis got himself together and was able to make free throws. So that was a that was huge for him. But as saying he's the best player in the game, I think that's that's to be argued because Kevin Durant is still a great player as well, and he's great at what he does. And what he does is he can shoot that rock, you know, pull up from 30, 40, 
with ease and got the handles for a seven footer, got the handles of a, a almost of a point guard. So I think the days of the most dominant player, like, you know, like they, they did with um, LeBron James. I think now is the floor is open. I think it's open for everybody to do what they do and what they good at is up to coach and staff to stop or take away. And they didn't take nothing away from Giannis. Giannis was able to do whatever he wanted to do. And that's mainly because I don't know what happened to DeAndre Aiden. He, he got what lost. happened to him? He got lost. I don't know. He got lost in the sauce, bro. I don't know. And, um, you know, Giannis, I mean, we said it. Giannis only got, but two moves. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But they are effective. We and said if it. You don't, and wrestling. if you don't take it away from him, if you do not take those, because you know he's going in the lane, he's starting up high, going down, and giving you a spin move. He gives you a spin move. You you know it's coming. It's almost like James Harden with the, the uh, step back. You know it's coming, but you can't stop it. And they didn't take it away from him. So, I mean, you know, again, I think it's you, uh, you got two great players at during this time, both in their in their prime. Giannis is younger than uh, KD. KD's what going on 33? 31. 32 or 33? He's right now 31. 31? Okay. So, I mean, uh, as you've seen in game six or seven of the Eastern Conference Finals, Giannis was. Uh, was too much in the post for KD. KD couldn't guard him in the post. But at the same time, Giannis really can't mess with KD. On the perimeter. On the perimeter. So, I mean, you got two great players, man. And I don't I don't want to call neither one of them, you know, the best in the league. They both right there. So, it's just going to be fun. It's fun for the NBA fans because, you know, you got two guys that one guy wanted to stay in. And that's another thing. And I'm not going to... Take it away from the rest of you guys. The the thing that you appreciate with the, the whole Giannis thing is that he he stayed where he was at and he didn't go nowhere. Okay, and, so, and not that, only that, you know. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Kev. I'm right, just no, picking no, back real quick. Not only that, he didn't. Um, you know, and people may say this is petty or whatever, whatever, man. Yo, man, you like what you like, man. It's like the uh, my man Da always say, owners own, coaches coach, players play, right? So you didn't see Giannis meddling all in the uh, GM's business. Yes, he said he wanted this guy, that guy. He didn't get him. He didn't cry. He didn't pout. He didn't say, damn it, I didn't get the guy that I wanted. I want out of Milwaukee. Yo, man, he let the team build around him and continue to build around him. And now he got a championship. You know what I'm saying? It was ultimately still up to him being the man on the team to produce the goods. And he did that with a 50 stamp. Bah! Just like that. So. As you say that, um, James, let me just play something real quick. This is um, courtesy of ABC Sports ESPN. You know, obviously, I want, I want to get the job done. You know, uh, they, but that's my stubborn side. Like, it's easy to go somewhere and go and win a championship with somebody else. It's easy. I could go. I, could, I don't want to put anybody in the spot. But I could go to a super team and, you know, just do my part and win a championship. Still one. But this is the hard way to do it, and this is the way. And we did it. Eric, he looked like he um, he followed after you. He stopped at um, <laughs> podium afterwards. And, and I know that that has to be so refreshing. And so, you know, when you finally get to the to the top of that mountain and you look back down on what you've been through, man, his his role was harder than most guys, man. So I mean, yo, man, again, kudos to that whole Milwaukee. Um, organization, man, top to bottom, they did what they had to do, man. And uh, they they got this guy, they drafted him, they believed in him. He believed in them, vice versa. And uh, they made it work. And Kev, I just got one thing to say. Steven Jackson, shut your goddamn mm -mm, mouth up, mm -mm, please. Nope, mm -mm, shut nope. your punk ass up we, talking we, about Milwaukee was a super team. No, nope, you got to be Darryl, kidding me. Darryl, no. Nope. We, we are I, not. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I had we to not, because we I not, heard it. We're not bringing it. these clowns. We're not bringing these clowns on the show, man. The, you know, this, the this guy Go said. This guy said. He says. I was like, what are you talking about? Yo, hey. no disrespect to Middleton and no disrespect to uh, Holiday. Nope. Great players. Good players. There's nobody that I know that said Milwaukee was a super team. Anybody here? Not ever. 
Oh, okay. ever. All right. I'm just making. Even, I'm just making. Back I'm just when they had Ray clear. Allen and Big Dog Robinson, did anybody and Sam Cassell? Ain't um, nobody said that. Mike, person. did you say that? Yeah. Imagine. That's why I'm not even justifying that with a comment. <laughs> I'm right? sorry because the guy made me mad. I I'm not like, taking none of them niggas besides to build the team around. <laughs> besides Giannis. Yeah. Right. Yo. Again, it's not disrespecting Maybe those Lopez guys. Those guys ago. are not bums. No, they're not bums at they're, all. They're really, but they're not Kyrie. They're not. They're not, Le- they're not LeBron. They're not D Wade. They're not Chris Bosh. They're not James Harden. That's all I'm saying. But they got the job done, and that's why we. That's why I respect the Milwaukee Bucks and what they did. Go ahead. Let me let me add this. What what do you think about? those naysayers that said, well, the Bucks role was extremely very easy because Stop. of the injury listen. bug. <laughs> oh, no. Listen, oh, listen. no. What's listen. my I, 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 Go ahead, Mike. Go ahead, Mike. No, I'm, 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 Mike. Let, let, is, let, I'm just let, the one that's moderated. I just asked the questions. Go ahead. Yeah, I said, because well, of the injury bug, who they played that was, what, Brooklyn? That's about it. They ain't play a bunch of injured teams throughout. Like, they're crazy. That wasn't it. They didn't have it like like if you wanted to say Phoenix, if you wanted to use an example, even though I don't think Phoenix really. I mean, but nah, not Milwaukee. It's part of the game, though, man. I mean, oh, man. Look, that too, they didn't be strategically. Yeah, we know we know Kyrie's going to get hurt in round two. So let's make sure we the three. Like they didn't do that. None of that went on. So. Nobody said nothing when when nobody said nothing when Draymond Uh-oh. Green got thrown out the game on a on a in a in a finals game in a finals game. Nobody said absolutely nothing, but they gave it. You know what I'm saying? Nobody. It's just amazing to me about this, is this for stuff. You. Yeah, it's amazing. And I don't remember anybody saying again. I don't remember. Sorry, Daryl. I don't remember anybody saying um, when the buddy games change was in the bubble last year and they beat a hapless hurt Miami Heat team that still gave them problems. Nobody Jimmy, said a word. Jimmy Butler was so tired after that series. He just looked like but well, hold on. Let's not forget half the NBA teams wasn't people opted out last year. And is it me? No, did people opt out last year? Yes, they some of them opted out. Yeah. Okay. So we didn't have full squad. You didn't nope. Okay. And, but oh, yet, yeah. last year was the hardest. And yet, you didn't travel. All you did was go from upstairs, downstairs. And this is the, come on, man. man order stop. room service. Come on, dog. Stop, man. What are we, what are we, what are we what think we stupid here? Come on, man. I'm just saying. There's no way in the world. You had to deal with, you go to, you tell me the lake is going to Milwaukee like they did if last year. If this is reversed. The Lakers last year going to a Milwaukee or or a Miami Heat a stadium packed seventeen thousand inside, sixty thousand on the outside of crazy fans. The energy was crazy uh, the other night, two nights ago. Out to the city of Milwaukee, that was dope what they did. Mm-hmm. That was that was yo. You that didn't was- face that in a bubble. Come on, man, stop. Well, the state Stop. of Wisconsin had to do something. No, 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 my bad. I'm sorry. Yo, uh, my bad. The <laughs> Phoenix yo. fans was lit. The Phoenix fans was my favorite. Yeah. So when the dudes out there count hundreds for the free throw, like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nah, man. But Kevin, Damn. forget about it. Kevin. Stop with the 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 injury bug. I don't want to hear it. Everybody went through injuries. I do not want to hear it. It's part of the game, as he said. Or oh, Mike said it's part of the game. Shout out That's to the Brooklyn happened. Nets fans for coming up with that that counting the free throw chair. Like that is <laughs> that was like the best thing I've seen in. Nah, in that the, was, wasn't it? I thought crowd. it was the Knicks. It started with the Knicks. Nah, it was Brooklyn. He played Brooklyn in the second round. Yeah. No, I thought. Wait a minute. No, he's talking about what Giannis. That yeah. that was that was Brooklyn. Okay. Yeah. Shout out to them, man. That was great. Well, Kev, let me let me ask you real quick, moderator. How do you how did you feel overall with this uh this this NBA finals, man? Was it to your was it to your um did it quench your thirst as a basketball fan? 
I think it was good to see some different blood. Um, I agree. to me, I, I I just think just for that, you see another star shine. Giannis got a lot of um power off for getting punched out in the last couple of rounds. Um, and it's just good. To, and and to me, you know, I'm not a super max super super team dude i i like when you start you know like the drake song you know started from the bottom now you're here you know what I'm saying they took this team and and they built it from scratch and they won they won it's hey, it's go ahead you know what i can appreciate about it it kind of remind it brought us back to back in the day where teams had to go through something they went through a stage when it got beat they didn't make it it got beat didn't make it that third time they cracked it and kind of reminded me of the bulls reminded me of Detroit with the, the, with, with the, uh, um, Boston, mm-hmm. the bulls with Detroit, it just, you know, getting through, finally breaking through and they did it. And that's what people I think respect about it. I, that's, I know that's what I respect about it. And, uh, you know, kudos to them again. Yeah. Uh, and I want to say too, um, shout out to the Phoenix Suns, man, because um, just adding one piece changed the whole trajectory of that that team. Um, I don't think anybody going into the season had Phoenix coming out of the West. I mean, regardless of injuries or what have you. Um, I just wonder is Chris Paul going to stay or whatever. I mean, that's for another another time, but I, I, I would hate that they put all this work in for this one year and he leaves and then the team kind of falls by the wayside. I, I would hate, I would hate that for Booker. Um, and I want, I want to say too, that, um, people please stop putting, stop, stop projecting your favorites on other guys, man. He is not Kobe Bryant. He will never be Kobe Bryant. He doesn't want to be Kobe Bryant. He is Devin Booker. Could we just leave these guys and let them grow into who they are going to become instead of already putting somebody else's name on their back? That's all. Or their games are nothing similar. They're nothing similar. There's nothing similar about their games. People just be going, they see a fadeaway. They be like, oh, oh, he's doing a fadeaway from the post? Yeah, he's Kobe. He's Kobe. Like, bro, that's not, that's not Kobe. And I don't agree. I don't think Giannis is the best in the league. Or KD, I still think Braun got it by by a little bit. But I still think he got it. I don't think the boys. If Giannis get a jump shot, though, I think Giannis will honestly be hands down the best because you can't stop him getting to the basket. And he get that jump shot, hey, he'll be. But he don't look like he want no jump shot, so he just gonna be Giannis. I mean, he got he got his Robin for the jump shot duties. Oh. That's true, and and then he be willing to pull it. He be missing. But he'll pull that hole like Ben Simmons won't even throw you a pump fake. Like he just. So yo, why do you say LeBron is still the best? In, you know, he's still the best in the game with all the you know. Because he's thirty six. <laughs> nah. <laughs> yo, you, yo, I was just about to get mad just in a few. <laughs> yo. That's why I had to laugh, yo, man. Yeah, he's about to make me mad with that one. Man. <laughs> nah, but. Look at his numbers continuously. The numbers is continuously what they is. You always got a chance for him out there. And then, like, his game has changed. Like, you know, he couldn't – you had to respect his jump shot. You know what I mean? You, at the point, now at the point, you got to respect his jump shot. Like, remember when he first came in? He just wasn't trusting that. They just let him shoot. They were guarded, but they wasn't. Now you actually got to take some kind of stock in his jump shot. So I think LeBron still got it. And then – Last season, with it being a break, and then this season, with it just being stupid, these this is kind of like, you know, like wish wash years. I really don't want to hurt or help nobody stock too crazy right now. I, I look at it, I look at it like like this, man. It's always the great debate with in in hip hop, like this generation. Well, not this generation, but the uh, middle child generation of the drake the k dot and the and the j cole everybody has their favorites or whatever but those are the three pillars of that generation and you could kind of sort of put it like you got you got Bron, you got um Giannis, and you got um kd man i mean at any given time depending on 
if the guys around them are healthy, you know what I'm saying? You 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 gonna be in it every time out. You gonna you're gonna go to the playoffs, barring injuries. I mean, say what you want. That, that's 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 a given. So so we'll talk more about your more about your comparison off the camera, but all right. The rap part of it. No, nah, I just had a question about the rap part of it. We'll talk about that after the show. Okay. So what is uh, uh Steph and because see, this is why LeBron has let a lot of guys eat. And there's a lot of guys like Steph who's won MVPs. Um uh, didn't win the MVP of the finals, but won MVPs. Does that Steph mean right out, Steph right there? He like top four. He in the top five. He's in there. Some people might put him at three. Some people might put him at so, four. So if you if you got him at four, who's the other? Who's five? Um, it could go one or two ways for me. I could either go Kawhi or I could go harder. I could go one of those two ways. But Kawhi be hurt all the time, so that be hurting his stock with me. Daryl Kawhi got a real sometime he schedule. So you so you saying we saying not not in no particular order, LeBron, KD, yeah, Giannis, yeah, Curry, yeah, Kawhi, at or Harden, four. one of the two. Nah, Kawhi or Harden, they like five A and B. Like I could go either way with them too. What about yeah. Joe? What about Joker? Nah, Joker's Joke, uh, just an MVP, dog. He, for he, a he, for a big to be top five for me, you gotta be, you dominant. gotta be, uh, yeah, he, you gotta be. I mean, Shaq. he's good. He's, he's <laughs> you gotta good. be Shaq, like. And I think I'll put like I him and Embiid is like. Yeah, I, I'll put Embiid slightly over Jokic because Embiid, to me, has been doing it at least the last two, two and a half years. MB be hurt too. That's what be killing me about MB. He got a sometime he ass schedule too. Yeah, but if you had, if I had to pick Joker and MB would be the seven, eight or eight, nine, like they right after each other. Cause you can't put one too much further over the other. I feel like. Yeah. One last question, Kev. Where, where y'all put Dane? Cause y'all, y'all totally forgot about Dane. Where you put top Dane at? Is he top 10? Top 10. He's, in, I, I believe he's top 10. I would have to think about it, but maybe right outside. He wouldn't be too far top, away. Top 15. No, I say that. He would be like, if he was outside, he would be a little bit. Hold on, wait, wait, hold up. <laughs> this is, this is, this is, Kev, Kev, you done messed up now. You yeah, done, he you did. Done, you, done, you done jumped this like another 15 minutes, dog. Yeah, he just you slipped You got 15, I'm going to be like Carmelo. You got 14 guys ahead of Dane? No, I said in my top 15. I don't know exactly where, but in my top 15. I got but him. Now like he got top 10. So he, could be, he could be 11. He could be 12. He could be. So, so he's 10. between 10 and 15. Yes. I'm going to say so that. So name, name nine other guys. 10 and 12. I, I need nine other guys, man. Yeah, you got the triple double machine, Russell Westbrook? No, no. Absolutely <laughs> not. No, no. I'll leave this podcast right now. No, no, no. Yo, he's an MVP. I don't care. Russ is like top 20 something. Damn, he just slid down to 20. My boy is harsh, boy. Y'all are harsh. He's Y'all are harsh. Boy. Y'all are harsh. Y'all are harsh the man. turnovers, the shot selection. Yeah. Those are I key mean, y'all are factors. I know he could get you to the playoffs, but what are you gonna do when I get there? You could get me there, but what are we gonna do? Yeah. That's how I feel about you. him. Russell is a great player, man, but he's like you gonna he's, get me there. He's he's kind of He's kind of like that car, man. That car that you buy that you know is a good car, but it breaks down. But, but it before it won't but, get but, you all the way. Before people kill me in the comments, he's yo, like, man, a- let, me, let me just say this, yo, Russell Westbrook, great player. If if I had to go by heart, he's in my top three. Oh, yeah. oh definitely, one hundred percent. He has a bunch of heart. Oh, definitely. Yeah. He but he never dogs it at all, at all, man, at all. But. He has that that Giannis energy. You know, he saying? got my favorite quote. Man, Pat Bev be fooling y'all, man. He don't be doing that. <laughs> man, Pat Bev be screaming, waving his arms. <laughs> man, this has been a very interesting NBA season. Real quick, we're gonna go on to something else. Real quick, who God, it's over. Who y'all mm. the next year? Start with Mike. Who's winning next year? Yeah. Can we have the draft first? 
But uh, uh, who do I got winning next year? Come back to me. Okay. D Dub. Next year, barring injuries, I would love to see the Eastern Conference Finals probably going to be Giannis and Brooklyn. If that and that team is going to be back, so I would, I'm going to pick Brooklyn to to do it. Um, James, if it's between God, I, I will I will say Milwaukee only because Milwaukee seems like they know how to outlast injuries. Um, yeah, and I want to see what Philly does if they make a trade and get Ben Simmons out of there. They bring some pieces in there. I would like to see what that is, but of course, I mean, as of right now, I would have to I would have to say Milwaukee out of the East. I don't see. I don't think Philly gonna make any trades, though. I don't think um, nothing. All right, I got it. All right, it's gonna be controversial. Here, here we go. Is this a hot take? Or is it nah, a- nah, nah. This is just, <laughs> this is just a conspiracy theory. Then you just. I think Chris Paul already came out. <laughs> no. I'm spitballing, but uh, Chris Paul gonna opt out because he already said he won 100 M's. The Lakers didn't sign Schroeder back. The Lakers gonna get Chris Paul. And they're gonna let Chris Paul get one on the way out. It's gonna be Lagos Bucks in the finals. And Lagos <sighs> winning. Lagos winning at six. Uh-oh, Ron just had a movie come out. Chris Paul just got eliminated. They gotta get one for the one for the he ain't one. Gonna get one. If he wow. if he didn't get one here in Phoenix, he ain't gonna get one. Uh, he don't gotta be the man, he don't gotta be the man in, in, in for the Lakers. He don't gotta be the man. Moderator, please, 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 moderate. please moderate. I, I, I'm, I'm, if you if you are waiting on Anthony Davis to deliver, because LeBron can't do it by himself, Anthony right. Davis is going to be hurt. Chris if Paul Anthony is going to be hurt, hurt, and they're going to be right back in the same pot. Right, if, if, if Anthony Davis do get hurt, right? If I'm Davis sorry, moderator. I'm sorry. Listen, if LeBron would have had Chris Paul after Anthony Davis got hurt this year, he would have won. Moderator, please so, drug test this guy. Please. Yo, listen. I mean, <laughs> drug test me for what? Hold on. <laughs> Drug Listen, test you um, for foolishness because the Lakers is not going nowhere. Now, if Melo goes I, to LA, then I'll give you that nod. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, uh, what? I, I, I Mello, heard that. Shh, shh. No, we'll talk about that later. Melo staying in Portland. If barring an injury, I'm with D-Dub. Barring an injury, if the Nets are healthy, they should win it on me. <laughs> we'll see. If the I, Nets are healthy, is the sky red? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, because you know Kyrie gonna get hurt. He do for <laughs> he always got one. He always got something. He always got something. Let me go on to the next segment. Uh, very interesting year with basketball. Very that is over. Shout out to Brooklyn, though. I, I love to see it happen, but uh this next topic um just came hot off the presses here this afternoon. Um what is it? I missed it. Um we I won't. Do my favorite pastime as D Dub as, as uh, DA say. Read um, as the NFL approaches the 2021 season, the league of four clubs that it would not extend the season to accommodate COVID-19 outbreak among unvaccinated players for a cause that causes a game cancellation. NFL Network's Tom Belizio reported Thursday that the NFL sent a memo to its club stating that if a game cannot be rescheduled during the during the 18-week schedule due to COVID-19 outbreaks among unvaccinated players, the team with the outbreak will forfeit and be credited with a loss per sources informed wow. of the situation. In addition, players of, of both teams will not be play, paid for the loss contest. And the team responsible for the cancel games due to the unvaccinated players will cover financial losses and be subject to potential discipline from the commissioner's office. And that's just a mouthful right there. I don't need to read anymore. I'll start off with James Eric. What's your thoughts on what I just read from the well, NFL? I, I will say this. I don't have an issue with a lot of what was said. I think um, you know, this is this is this is they trying to get these players together. They're not trying to have anything um tamper with their money but the only thing that the thing that stood out to me when you read that whole thing was unvaccinated 
So what happens, God forbid, I, I'm, I'm always trying to think further than with the service show. What happens when a vaccinated player gets infected and infects others? What happens Damn if you. a certain so strength, what, 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 what's going to happen then? Eric, when I heard this this afternoon, I said the same thing. Mike, you're right. You stole our thunder. What happens? Because it's happening. It happened the other night, last Friday night with the Red Sox and Yankees. Well, so what, what are we going to do? What, this is, again, the NFL. The NFL always, always, take care. The NFL always paints itself in this undubious corner. We're going to take a stand on unvaccinated players. Wait a minute. <laughs> so what happens, as we just stated, when the vaccinated players, they could test it, they test positive. Then what, NFL? They'll, they'll get to that when it happens. So there's no contingency plan for that? As I, I mean, I'll read a little bit long. I'll, I'll, I'll read a little bit long, but- I didn't um, see none of it. Um, the DA has joined us. <laughs> Perfect time. Perfect time. Perfect time. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, man. The DA has joined us. DA, can you hear us? He's connecting. Perfect time. Perfect time. I'm going to read it one more time for him. Yeah, read read our, that again, kid. He's our, he's our legal correspondent. <laughs> Yeah, because right, I, I, I didn't hear it this morning, this afternoon. It, it came, it came across the wire around two o'clock from the uh, the NFL from the Park Avenue offices in uh, in New York City. Yeah, they full of it, man. They they full of it. Um, Dan, can you hear us? You with us? He's not quite there yet. So go ahead, Michael. You had another point. The NFL is full of is full of shit. You just played a season during the pandemic when people were still locked in the house. And now, because we got this vaccine that, remember people, not saying the COVID vaccine don't work, but vaccines don't cure anything. They preventative. So you're going to tell me that this, you got this COVID magic vaccine and now you're going to, now we got more restrictions. Yeah, but unvaccinated player gets sick or vaccinated player gets sick. This, that, and the third. Bro, if y'all really cared, y'all would just not do the season until it was completely understood that nobody's health was at risk. The, the NFL loves to say they for the players, they for the players. You added a week. You added a week to the season with COVID still going on, and now you pushing vaccines. They full of shit. They are full of shit. Roger Goodell must be getting some vaccine money Don't on the low. Right, right. Oh, we're full of players. Yeah. yeah, they just, they full of it. CTE, COVID-19. Whatever's next, whatever they can get some money off of, make it look like they care. They gonna do and they gonna say. D Dub, they full of it. What's your thoughts on this, brother? Yeah, I, you know this has totally escaped me. Um, it doesn't make sense to me with the you know, but the NFL is you know they, they doing what the NFL does. They NFLing. So uh, <laughs> yeah, you know uh, until something fucks up, and then you know here here we go. We we back right at it. So. Exactly what you said, Mike. Good point. You know, for whatever you do, you take the vaccine, you don't take the vaccine. You know what I'm saying? That's it's a personal choice up to you. I'm not here to tell you to do it. You do what you, you want to do. Take the vaccine. You do what you want to do. Okay. Um however, again, it's a vaccine, it's not the cure. It's a it's a, it's a preventive measure. If you think it, it will help you, you know what I'm saying? But that doesn't mean that you won't get it. So I don't understand what the NFL is doing. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. So we shall see. Um, uh, but again, like you said, Kev, the NFL likes, I don't know, they, they paint themselves in the corner and then, you know, acting like they're the, you know, they're the woke champions of the, you know, that they, they got everything all together. And, you know, well, we'll see. We'll see. Um, time will tell. Time yeah. will tell. When I read this, Dang. I was like, wow. I don't know. I was like. But it, yeah, but the, here's the here's the thing, though. That's The one thing is, you know, I'm, I was shocked with this, uh, that they actually going to forfeit the game if they don't want, if, 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 was you reading, if they don't have enough players, they will forfeit the Oh man, I don't, I don't even think this is going to. How are they going to? How's the national? How's, how's the P? How's the players' association? 
How's that gonna go now? They yeah. gotta test this. Yeah, they, it's they, seventeen they... games. Forfeit one. I don't like it. Forfeit. Forfeit. But what happens? What happens if it goes more than you know? More than a, a game. It's somebody. It's gonna happen. Something you have to, is you have to quarantine to for fourteen days. So what if you get a a a, a whole locker room? And what if you get a Tennessee Titan from last year? Yeah, something is going to happen. God, oh, you know, like, I, I, I'm not wishing nothing on nobody, but something is going to happen. It's the here's, laws of probability. Here's from the league memo. Let me read a couple of things. Um, competitive principles from the league memo. The, the league will make every reasonable effort consistent with underlying health and safety principles to complete the full 270 game regular season schedule within the current 18 weeks and all postseason games as scheduled in a safe and responsible way. This is grounded in commitment to players, coaches, fans, and business partners. We do not anticipate adding a 19th week to accommodate games that cannot be rescheduled within the current 18 weeks of the regular season. Yo. DA. What up? DA, can you hear us? Yeah, you know, hey, listen, man, you know, I'm in, the, I'm in the back cave on some other shit right now. You know what I'm saying? A little, a little drugged up on the Oxy. Yeah, per- Percocets and Molly. Um, I, don't, I don't know who Molly is, but... Um, did, you, did you hear what we just was talking about? Have you, have you heard that today? With the NFL? Yes. Uh, they th- all going to get... They're going to get sued, man. They're going to get sued. It, dog, like... Listen, it, it's stupid, right? I'll tell you why it's dumb. Um, and it's pretty, pretty simple. Because the... The shots that they're giving right now don't help you against the variant. So they don't know what they're giving out at this point in time. So for you to say, yo, uh, you guys, are, you, you didn't get a shot. And if you get sick, you can't play. It's some bullshit because most of the folks that are in the ERs right now are people that have been vaccinated. So again, going back to just getting to a point of clarity where individuals are saying, hey, what I'm taking is actually going to help me and make me safe, then yeah, you you can do this. But again, it's a private corporation and in private corporations, you can do what the fuck you want to do. Yeah, what about, what about the Players Association? What do they do? Uh, if, if it was me, I would be like, fuck y'all. Y'all make me. You know, first off, that. You're going in and out. Yeah, you there? You was going in. That the vaccination that they're giving out. Oh, I'm sorry. Yo, this is a back. Uh, I, can you hear me now? Yeah, we hear you. Yeah. Uh, yo, uh, I'm just. being pushed out here is even working <laughs> at the rate that they say it's supposed to work or going to work or whatever it is. So to monetize uh, uh, you not getting it done and you're, you're suing because of all the losses of the other team because they can't play the game and they're talking about the the people in the uh, uh that work there, the stands, the Frank man, everybody going to get some money because, you know, the team, our team can't play because someone on our team said they weren't vaccinated and got sick. So what happens to a person that's vaccinated and gets sick? Well, before you came on, we just said that. And I, and I said, I made the statement, the NFL always paints itself in a corner. They always take this hard land stance. We're against domestic violence. And then what yeah. happened the next day? Somebody commits domestic violence and Greg Hardy, y'all don't do shit. In fact, oh, he well, got an opportunity to go play somewhere else. You got the dude in Seattle. Beat the shit out of this girl. And I didn't forgot the fucker's name. He probably gonna start the season on the on the roster. Well, th- well, that's what they said, because he's not a star. He's not a visible face. Nobody knows him. So yeah, that's why I, I said, really? That's that's well, that's your well, defense? That trick that got the shit beat out of us, you know who the hell he is. <laughs> Yo, it's not a joke. Sorry, <laughs> folks. That was yeah. And we're not laughing at that. We're, not laughing. Saying. Nah. we're just saying. Oh, I'm not laughing at her. I'm laughing at the situation. Yeah. She knows who he is. Yeah. And if the Seattle Seahawks are still going to, you know, 
run with it. The reality is that if you were a casual onlooker to that case and you heard about it, you done forgot the name of this dude. You know? You, you forgot. Like, you don't know. Listen, man. I was just looking at that at the, the, the mothership. Not my mothership, but on some mother shit. Um, and I'm looking at Big Ben. Mm. And a lot of people don't understand what happened 18 years ago. Right? Mm-hmm. But, you know, like I said, it, it's the NFL is always going to be following. They never get out front. They never, you know, get out there before something and come up with a solution. You know, they always deal in some trying to catch up with a solution. So even them trying to be um, in front of it now is actually going back. So they ain't going to do nothing to get sued. You can't prove that the vaccinations help. You know, you can't say if a person that got a non-vaccinated person didn't get sick, or he may have got sick from a vaccinated person. All these lines are very, very, you know, blurry. And um, to me, um, I would rather you just wait it out and take the cases one by one and deal with them based on that rather than saying that you definitively have an answer to a question that nobody in America has an answer to. And, and, and the, you're right. That's, that's to, to me, would be the proper way to handle it. And I, and I get the NFL has lost some money last year or whatever the case may be, but this is not the way to handle and run the business of taking this hard line, hard line stance. I think in all types of business, there's some things you have to you know, be a little gray in. And this is one of the matters where they, they absolutely have to be a little gray in and every case, you know, because let's, okay. And I'm going to, we're going to go on to the next topic after this, you know, let's look at the national basketball association, right? They have, they said, if you go out and hang out and party, right. You're not supposed to play, right? Unless you LeBron James, but go ahead. Right. Mm -hmm. Mr. James played. What's his name was out. Um, Chris Paul was out. So, Mm -hmm. Sometimes the leagues, man, they play, they pick and choose or whatever. It's going to be very interesting to see how this, this goes down um, with this association, uh, with this, um, with this ruling that the, and I'm pretty sure the um, players association will absolutely be in this and they'll be, they'll be saying something or taking some legal action. And I think, I think they all will Kev. And, you know, again, the NFL starts it, but they're not going to finish the fight. So every other every other league companies like this is like some some far reaching shit, yo, like real. So you're gonna have Bank of America, you know, yo, if you didn't get vaccinated, you can't work here no more. Who knows if the vaccinations even work? Yeah. If you're a teacher teacher in a school and you know you didn't get vaccinated, but there's an outbreak in your school. Well, you know, it's funny you said that because uh, I just heard today uh, on the news that some of these hospitals are mandating that their employees get vaccinated. All employees get vaccinated. So this is going to be, this is definitely a hot topic yep. going from this forth on about this vaccine and people uh, getting vaccinated or um, people being mandated by their jobs to be vaccinated. Yeah, it's definitely a, a, a hot political topic. And, you know, well- That's we'll where sports should be. Right, yeah. It's not supposed to be political, but as we know, that's what happens. But we're gonna move right along to our next topic. Um, we were off the air for a couple of weeks for um, vacation and um, things of that nature. And uh, what we didn't discuss last week was the, what the new NCAA really means for student athletes. Let me read this article real quick. Won't be long And a decision that could shake up. This is from CNN sports and a decision that could shake up college sports is 
the Supreme Court ruled this week against the NCAA's restrictions on educator related perks for student athletes. The case affirmed lower course rulings and further chipped away at the National Collegiate um, the NCAA power over the athletes who drive its revenue. College athletics raking billions of dollars through sales and tickets and merchandise, plus lucrative TV contracts for high profile sports like football and basketball. But the NCAA has long argued that restrictions on student athletes are necessary to ensure they maintain amateur status and they don't blur the lines between college and professional sports. That's very hypocritical of them. Um, um, let me read this. The Supreme Court decision Monday was narrowly tailored around a case brought by former West Virginia running back Sean Austin and other players. The ruling will allow the athletes to receive education related benefits such as graduate school tuition, study abroad opportunities, computers, tutoring, vocational school, and achievement was for their academic pr progress. But experts said it could also benefit student athletes by paving the way for more lucrative opportunities. Its impact will reverberate for years, um, one scholar said. In short term, the ruler will prevent the NCAA from limiting educators related benefits. In the medium and long term, the NCAA prize amateurism defense is, excuse me, is riddled with um, body blows, says Michael A. Carter, a professor at Rutgers Law School. d Dub, what do you think about the NCAA ruling? Yo, man. Uh... It's been a long time coming, man. You know what I'm saying? As far as I'm concerned, um, yo, these guys, the NCAA to me is a bunch of crooks anyway. So um, to be honest with you, so, you know, a lot of these guys, they get money hand over fist. Um, a lot of people don't think that, you know, college players should be getting paid. But at the same time, these same, these same guys, coaches are benefiting, uh, Schools are benefiting off the likenesses of, of these uh, athletes. So um, I think it's a, it's, it's a long time coming. And there's a lot of money to be made in this thing. And I think that if you're using, the kids should, should be getting paid. I just think that's just how it is. It's capitalism, right? That's what we, that's what we, that's what we, this country is about. So why not? Mike Mills. What's your thoughts on the NCAA players getting paid? I'm a big proponent to anybody who deserves it getting paid. So, yes, they should have been paid a long time ago. I'm happy they're getting paid now. And now we can finally get the college basketball and college football games that we've been missing for the past about <laughs> 10, years. Like, nice. like, boy, man, it's not the same when you, can, when you can import your draft class. I miss those days. So... We get our video games back, and these kids get to eat dinner this week. So, cool. I'm happy. Let them get their money. Um, James Eric, what's your thoughts on this? Yeah, I, I mean, I echo everybody else, man. It's It's been a long time coming, um, and it's a shame how there's some guys that had certain things. They were penalized just for trying to you know, trying to survive. I know in some people's minds, that's kind of, oh, well, you're getting a college tuition. Well, okay, well, college tuition ain't ain't, ain't made nobody fat the last time I checked, you know. Ain't gonna keep no skin on your bones. Um, you know, it doesn't, yo, know, man. The fact of the matter is, it's, it's, it's a long time coming. It's finally happened. And um, yeah, I mean, yo, know, man. The NCAA is not going to miss any money, dog. They're not going to miss any of this money that's that's going to these these uh, student athletes, not not whatsoever. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you can cut half of some of these guys' salaries, and and everybody still be still be fine. But you know, it is what it is. Capitalism one on one, right? You know, like like Mike said, you know, the players with the with the um, EA Sports licensing and and. You know, you got a guy in there, he's wearing, he looks just like Carmelo Anthony and, you know, he can't get that money. That's that's just wrong. DA, who's our legal correspondent for sports? Go ahead, man. Wish, wish, I know you got a lot of thoughts on this. You always have. What's up, brother? Hey, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty simple on its face. The kids deserve the money because you're using their life. Um, now, figuring out what's fair and what's not fair 
life ain't fair. And that's always been the argument that the NCAA has used that, oh, well, if we're playing the football players, what about the girls on the field hockey team? It's the same argument I have with uh, different types of professional sports. If you're not bringing people in to watch you, what money are you getting? <laughs> I'm not paying you if you're not generating any dollars. So we're going to get in super conferences. I think the day I heard something about Texas and someone else just joined Texas. the SEC. Yeah, 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 you just stole my thunder for the next um, thing. Go ahead. Oh, Texas sorry. Oklahoma. Um, no, you good. Yeah, Texas yeah, Oklahoma. Yeah, being in a, a super conferences, but that's what they were going to anyway. Correct. Like this, this is, you know, the power of five was trying to find a reason to leave the rest of the NCAA anyway. Because regardless of what everyone believes, and, and you know, I, I laugh when Mikey says it about like Central Florida and South Florida. Yeah, those are schools that maybe because they're in Florida and they have those type of recruiting grounds that could probably com probably compete um, to a point. But the reality is, folks, we know who's going to be there at the end every year. And we watch it anyway. Like, it's, there's no sense. Give me a surprise in the last 15, 20 years of a college team that came out of nowhere and was the champion. Ain't been none. No. But we still watch it, and we still watch the Idaho Potato Bowl, and, you know, because it, it becomes background noise. So by you paying the athletes, getting the athletes to go to schools where they're going to get their money, you're going to get a better product on the field, you know, like you said, the video games will change and get better. And the reality is that we can stop the charade, man. And Dabo can retire. Because Dabo said if they start paying kids, he'd leave. I think so, Dabo wanted to stay. <laughs> I think, oh, Dabo I think, I think, I think Dabo would have 14 million to stay in too. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. He ain't giving up his money. But yeah. my thing is, my thing is, I mean, if even if you even if you pay the guys, nobody said that you have to give them a free college education you can still you can why if you get if you're going to pay them then make them pay the college yeah. oh no oh no oh no oh no wait wait huh what <laughs> sound like you sound like you starting with the white man no i'm starting with if if this is your business right if this is you and this is your business you gotta flip the you gotta flip it now let's just, just be honest and be fair if this is you running your business you'd be like okay you want me to pay you well, hey, you have to pay for your college education here then. Nah, and, and, you can't have it both ways. That's all I'm no, saying. But, but, you can't, but Mike, they Mike, not heard it like that, Mike, you can let them yep. do that, but if you take the risk of dude saying, all right, fuck you, I'm going to Alabama then. Because that's, that's what you're doing on your campus. You yeah. know, I'm going to somewhere where I can get my money and I ain't paying. <laughs> and then there'll be a powerhouse. But that is capitalism. You mm -hmm. gotta take your risk, man. It's it's it's, it's the risk. You know, that's you gotta a take. great, great question that you flip. I'm just saying, yeah. Because listen, you know, we always thinking about it from you know what I'm saying? Well, I think I think too, but also on top of that though, it also depends on what these guys are making. Um when when you say that, one right. would automatically think that these guys are getting shoe deals and all this other stuff. That's not from the NCAA. So how mm -hmm. are they paying them if they getting shoe deals? See, it got to be some kind of, it has to be some kind of order for that. Hey, I'm, and that I'm just throwing everything people. out there because you know, I mean, once they, once this, this hit, people are already thinking. The new college yeah. kids, if they know like I know, I'll go to small town university somewhere, get them out there to love me, you get all them little local endorsements, you cash out, you, you leave college with it. Oh Money yeah, well, stacked up. Even if you don't make the league, yeah, indeed. And like you're saying, Eric, the, the one thing is, once it becomes Nike or Under Armour, then the NCAA legally, you can't tell Nike how much they can pay a dude. Mm -hmm. Nike can pay. I'm paying you what the fuck I want to pay you. Right. That's a that's a private company. They they can do whatever the hell they want to do. Right. And you know. It is what it is from there. But you know what? The good thing about that, fellas, is that it's making 
the fat cats at the top of the NCAA system at every school have to do their own math equations mm-hmm. to see what works for them. What works for them. Because Absolutely. the reality is they haven't had to do it. It's been free labor. You know, they all we're giving you an education, but it's not giving you shit if it's mine. Mm-hmm. Like I, you know, this and, is my, you know, this is my farm, right? So if I give you corn from my farm, it ain't really costing me nothing because it's my farm. And, and let me just say too, let's 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 keep it a buck, right? A lot of these guys, some of these guys come from where we come from, and worse, these guys ain't going for no fucking education. Okay, they're looking for a way out. Okay, just like how the NCAA is using them, they're using them. It's the same thing. Business. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so Business. let me let me let me let me interject this real quick. So I just looked up something real quick. So so D Dub to for your for your flip argument, right? So mm-hmm. you know, cat, you know, hey man, come to Penn State. Yo, yeah, you're gonna get paid. Yeah, you're gonna get paid. Let's say he gets paid maybe thirty thousand for the year, right? Okay. I'm just throwing that number out. Yeah. Right? But, and he doesn't live in the state of Pennsylvania. He comes from Florida. And currently, as of 2021, the current um, tuition for going to Penn State University 60, is $35,514 for out-of-state students. Yeah. So I'm going to Central Florida. <laughs> the normal money. Hey, you got you got to make a, a business deal, a business decision. What you just said, D, is yeah. mathematics. The math to math equation on both sides. And on both sides. And this is what happens. Yeah. So, you know, again. So, so they're going to try to set up whatever business model that they're going to do. And, and you're right. And, and, and we said it right here first. I, I can't wait for the first one to say, hey, OK, we're going to pay you, man, but you're going to have to pay some money. You're going to have to pay. It. And you know what's going to happen. Yeah. This, yeah. Is, this that's, is not that's... you. You're not going to eat your cake and <laughs> eat the ice cream and a honey bun at the same time. But no, no, good, no, uh, no. Honestly, honestly, it's still it's still built. If you think about it like that, right, it's still built for the NCAA to still have all control because, yeah, we could pay you, but we only going to pay you but so much. And then we're going to take something out. So you're going to be right back to square one anyway. Just like, just what based off of the <laughs> just based off of what Kev just the the the, the um, exhibit A that Kev just mentioned. Right. Unless if, the kid if, if I, knows his worth. Okay. All right, so hold on. So these well, deals. But if this, oh, go ahead, um, Mike. It's strictly through the NCAA, or it's through wherever they get the deal from. Uh, as I as I as I read it correctly and understand it, it's from wherever they get the deal from. So it's from if it's from Aunt Ruby's Peanut House in Enfield, North Carolina. Yo, that's what I'm saying. Like that with that, I would that kind kind of evens the field though. I mean, if the kid, the school is smart. Like I'm going to school in Nebraska where they're gonna pay for that. They're gonna I'm gonna go get a I'm gonna be doing these pharmacies for Jim Bob's pharmacy that's been open 45 years. <laughs> and I'm gonna just take care of me. Just but that, that's that's why that's why I interjected with what I said. It all depends on where it's coming from. Now the NCAA can they have every right to say we're only gonna pay with this much, this and that the third. That's why I said if it's if 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 the kid is getting his money from the college from the NCAA, and then he has to turn around and give back. It's almost like you, you're almost going right back in the negative, depending on what the costs are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because they can do that by right, by law, they can do that. They can raise it or lower it however they see fit. It's only beneficial in my eyes that if the money is coming from a shoe deal or something outside of the NCAA, that's the only way that these guys are going to be able to eat, in my opinion. I- I gotta research it more, but they said, dude, the quarterback at Alabama. Yes. They said he's already getting seven figures right now. From where? Uh shoot, a bunch uh, of different sources. Oh, okay. But like it's not the, it's dude. not Alabama though, is it? No, no, no. I know it's it's just outside of, you know, you gotta remember, like, you know. So wait a minute. Thing? So they will be able to get outside deals. Yeah, why not? Along as well. Let me, let me read it yeah. for you. Let me read this you can't, rule. You can't stop them. No, no, no. no. I didn't know if there was the, the rule because I know they can't get money from said players outside as it's constructed now. Is that correct? Correct. 
Okay. Yeah. Let me read. Let me read real quick. Uh, Alabama football coach Nick Saban has an officially named Bryson the Crimson Tide quarterback. Oh, okay. I thought we had some feedback. Uh, let me just skim. He's about to get paid. Bryson Young is approaching one million dollars in endorsement deals, says Coach Nick Saban. Mm. Good for him, though. I mean, yeah. I ain't hating. Good for him. Listen, he better get it because Alabama quarterbacks suck. I was just about to say that I ain't seen an Alabama quarterback yet. I would give six figures to Young signed. Day. Young signed a deal to be represented by Creative Artists Agency on July 2nd. Of Yay. The day mm-hmm. after the NCAA allowed athletes to profit on their name, image, and likeness. So far, Young's only public endorsement has been in the form of a tweet for the company Cash App. Well, there you go. There you go. So there you it know, is. Because it's outside of the NCAA. It's a privately owned company. They can pay dudes the way they want to pay them. And they say dude got the goods. They say he's, he's dead serious. He's a five star. Um, yeah. Yeah. They say he's dead serious for what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Um, because Mac Jones, and you know, you know, they were so good last year. He didn't get those usual backup minute reps that Alabama quarterbacks get. Um, but, you know, spring game, I've seen him. He looks good. I don't know what will happen, but the reality is they said the dude's already in that one. He already in his bag. He was just waiting for it to be legal. Yeah. So he could put yeah. it oh, on over the, you know, put his numbers out there for people to see. But he already knew. They already knew this cat was already in his bag, like, immediately. So, you know? So. Yeah, it, it, um, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'm just saying it's going to be interesting because. It's going to get larger, and there's going to be a lot of different uh, levels to this. And you know, as you unpeel the onion, it's just going to be more and more because this is for sure unbroken ground. Like right? this is something that dudes thought about, but because we never thought that it would actually ever really happen, we didn't put all of the things that could happen. You know, to light. Like Mike says something that's really cool. Like, why don't you just go to U- UNC Pembroke, right? And mm-hmm. you're in Pembroke, Shout and you're the, the you know the best football player there, and you get all of the stuff you can get from every car dealership, you know, hotel, everything in Pembroke. You know, Mike Mills gets. Now, I don't gotta go to Alabama. I can get my seven figures here. <laughs> right. So it's going to change a lot, man. It's going to change a lot. Of things, it's it's definitely it really going to change a lot. Let me move right along to what DA said at the beginning of the segment um, about um, power conferences. If Texas and Oklahoma, and this is by Dave Wilson from ESPN, staff writer, he says if Texas and Oklahoma join the SEC, it would break a longstanding gentleman's agreement between SEC schools that give conference members absolute veto power over the addition of another school from their state. According to the former Texas AM official, uh, Auburn Lofton, who helped steer the Aggies into the SEC in 2011 while serving as AM president, said the off-discussed unwritten rule was a specific conversation during the expansion talks in 2010-2011 when he was involved. Lofton also served as chancellor at Missouri in 2014-2015 after the Tigers made their move to the SEC. There's this misunderstanding among the membership, at least it was 10 years ago, that you don't admit a school from the same state as a member of school unless the member school is okay with it. Wow, I didn't know that. Lofton told ESPN.com on Thursday, we had talked a, about it from time to time amongst ourselves, that this was the way it was going to be, that if we had another school in Texas want to enter the SEC, Texas AM a- 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 would have veto power. Uh, let me read this real quick. Uh, Three states, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, have two SEC schools each. Both those both those date to the information of the conference in 1999. The league added Arkansas and South Carolina. South Carolina used to play in the ACC. I forgot about that. Both in states, both in states that did not have another SEC team. 
Um, there was something else. Lofton said, and this is what I think, Lofton said, most expansion discussions entered on schools such as North Carolina, North Carolina State, Virginia, or Virginia Tech, all schools and states with no SEC members. D-Dub, what do you think is going on with this? Is this going to be our Power Five? I guess. Um, not unless the, the rest the conference agree on it. If their conference is not going to let them get the hell up out of here, they need a, a what? Uh, I believe, hold on, check my notes here. They need a, what, a, a vote, at least three-fourths of the members need to uh, vote on this right. to extend their invitation. So um, we shall see. This is something that, you know, I, like DA said, they, you know, they've been wanting to move this along anyway. So, you know, again, um, they're supposed to be, I believe, talking about it today. Today's Thursday, right? Yeah, Thursday. Right. So uh, I, I, I believe we probably should know something within a couple of weeks here because it's been trending. Um, it's what it is. And, and what, what DA said, this is what the college football, college sports want. And, and mm-hmm. we saw it. Early in the early, coming, we saw it in the two thousands. You know, we saw it, you know, you know, and I hate to sound like the old guy. You know, with my beloved basketball, um, Big East, doesn't resemble nothing. Yeah, well, I don't even recognize. They it. destroyed the greatest basketball conference ever. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's all driven by money, and I get it. Um, yeah, it's gonna be and Power Five. Go ahead, yeah. D. The the Big East actually destroyed itself. You know. Like if you ever look at it, yeah, I, it was, that was probably one of the best thirty for thirties I ever saw. Um, oh, mm-hmm. Because the, yeah, the memories of the Big East, but there were things that the, that those schools did and could have done, um, but they were riding so high on the basketball that they didn't think about the football, mm-hmm. and they didn't really care. But no, when the they start to realize, mm-hmm. yeah, they started to realize that. As far as the schools and the look of the schools and the actual money, football is still king. Because remember, a college basketball game, you may get 15,000 people in there. Ohio State, they got 100,000 motherfuckers in there every weekend. Mm-hmm. That money, you you can't, there's nothing you can do with about that money, man. Listen, so, I, you know, I, I've been and they travel well. And they travel well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been twice to the University of South Carolina games in Columbia, South Carolina. It is amazing to see all those people out there, hundred thousand strong, and like they, oh, start, yeah, yeah. they start like tailgating the night before. It's oh, like, yeah. it's like they're, they're serious about that, man. Um, and, and alluding to DA's fact, yeah, I, I didn't think about that. Yeah, the Biggies probably was, didn't have a lot of foresight when it came to the, the looking at the the football side because football drives drives the car. Yeah, for every school. They they drive the car. It's not the Batman team. You know, shout out to anybody playing Batman or the gymnastics or track. It's football. It drives the car. And Eric, what was your point on this one? What, what well, you think? I was just gonna say it's all it's all money related, and I don't I don't see how um you know with buyouts and all this other stuff, man. Um I remember how Maryland jumped ship from Yes, from the ACC, and they charged them a ridiculous amount. Oh, this is your your leaving fee or something like that, and this is your acceptance fee. And Maryland happily gave that money over to be, you know, why? Because they're getting more money where they at now. So um, I don't see it, it's crazy. Texas is almost its own entity with its own, um, you know, Longhorn. Um, hey, they own TV station and uh, they run it, big. It, yeah, it, 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 and if the SEC gets that, man, I, I'm sorry, B. They're, they're, the, they're the NCAA all by themselves uh, when it comes to work, football. Bro. I mean, you could say Ohio State and this team that, bro, that te- that conference would be crazy if you add a Texas and Oklahoma in it. Well, it's done. Let me ask you this. Like, let me ask you this. What is, what is the University of Notre Dame for them with all this? They don't fit in nowhere because they still want to be Ivy League. They want to dance around. You know, they want to two step over here in basketball. They don't, they don't want that they smoke. Do they don't want that smoke. So that. without the smoke, you get no fire. But but 
I will say you know, though, it would if things keep going the way that they going, I, I guarantee that Notre Dame will eventually jump into somebody and stay put because of all the money that will be sitting there. When when their, does when does their TV move out? Let me let me go ahead, Eric. I'm sorry. I don't know when I don't that was, that was a hell of a deal. <laughs> like it was like a deal in perpetuity. Of the yeah, y'all just gonna be in in uh, NBC, NBC and y'all play Boston College and uh, you know you'll have your USC game and um, you'll play Navy or the Army or you know whichever one of them is okay that year and yeah because they're not they're not they should have been in the ACC and I thought this year man because of COVID and they won the game barely against Clemson and Clemson was playing without their quarterback. But the reality is that they're not really respected anymore. I don't believe as a program because they've shown that they don't want that smoke. Like they don't want that playing Clemson every year smoke to win the ACC and have to deal with Miami every year and have to deal with, with a good North Carolina when they're good or a North Carolina state when they're good. They just don't want that smoke. And I think people are seeing it, and I think kids are seeing it. Now, they still have a lot of cachet because you can graduate out of there and the alumni will hold you down forever. But the reality is, like, Notre the Dame is no longer what it once was, like when Jerome Bettis was there. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's not that. It's, it's not that anymore. Yeah. So. This is, if I'm reading this correctly, this is the last year of their 30-year contract they had with NBC. Uh, wow. I don't think in, I don't think NBC wants it because I don't think it does anything for NBC. No, the games are whack. <laughs> they they're not playing nobody. You might you might get one week, one or two good games a two year. Two weeks out the out the year for Notre Dame. Depending yeah, if yeah. Stanford is good, you may you that that's one and USC else, the USC and USC. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's about yeah, it. I, yeah. As far as I remember, but Boston College has been trash for I don't know how long now. You might, uh, Man, they I, might I, depends on when they might when they come up when they want to come up. Then when nah, it's good, yeah, they've been but, bad since. Man, but they've been bad. They've been bad for been a while, bad like ten years now. Yeah. So uh, Notre Dame needs to get their shit together and either get get off the pot shit or get off the pot, man. Ratings yeah. to NBC's Notre Dame game telecast have slumped to historic lows. From 2011 to 2020. Hold your thought, Kev. Hold that. Hold that thought. And they still want us to consider them for a national championship. Every stop, man. They, I don't they are the Dallas Cowboys of, of yes, college. Sir. Yes, Go they are. Yeah. Hey, Go guess ahead. who I heard about today? I got Jim, uh, uh, Jim, uh, what, 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 uh, Jerry Jones over here crying, to- choked oh. up, talk about. I'll do anything to, to win a championship. About to die. Yeah, you know you're about to die, man. He's eighty some years old, man. If you did anything, you should you should have got uh Jerry uh Jimmy Johnson back, and you should have never messed with him. And you might have had more championships on 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 deck, but no. And and, and let's be clear. Let's be clear, D. Because we talk about this all the time. I'm sorry, Kev. I know this is going another way. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Dallas, uh, quietest kept in the last twenty years. Should at least have at least I say six seven. With the teams, the rosters, I will give Jerry Jones this. He puts together qu- quite some rosters, okay, with the help of Bill Parcells and others. But still, he still tinkers and does his, all this other stuff. However, the teams that they put forth, there's no reason why they they don't have more championships than what they have. But it's I know at have, least three still- of, of them off the rip. I know of, they, they should have had. It was a better team and didn't do nothing with it. So... Again, that's a whole nother subject for another yeah, another yeah. time. I'm sorry, Kev. Go ahead, uh, Kev. No, nah, no, nah, you guys are good. No, nah, I, I was just I, I didn't know this was the last year of their 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 contract, so I don't know what they're but gonna do. It's um, coincidental, ain't it? That that who who is uh Texas and in, in, in Oklahoma trying to leave from? Oh, uh, they're from the, that. That'll uh, leave the door wide open. It's more money for them. 12, hey, we're gonna right? get we're gonna get 40, 40, 40 million from from Oklahoma and fifty million from Texas and. Hey, it's almost like the expansion fee that they charge expansion teams coming into the league. Yes. Any professional sport. They charge a, like an super amount of money. Oh, you want to be part of this league? Seattle yeah. Kraken, we, we need $100 million for you. Well, 
Well, that's not how much they charge. I think they charge, they got charged, uh, hold on, $50 million, because that was my next thing. Yeah, $50 million um, entry fee. Hmm. Wow. It's amazing, well, man. College football, it should be very interesting, to say the least, um, what's going on with that. Um, real quick, um, I just want to touch on it. Um, it's because of what we do. Um, D-Dub brought up a very interesting article yesterday about um, Deion Sanders' um, beef with the press. And I asked the question to the guys, and I'll ask it again. Where are we with the athletes and the media? Um, is it, you know, it's adversarial? Is it necessary? Where are we at? D-Dub, since you broke the story, tell us what happened with, um, with Deion. And, um, Deion and this other guy, I forget the guy's name. They must have had some type of, well, Deion was doing a press conference, and he, this guy called him, the, the reporter called him Dion. Hey, Dion, blah, blah, blah. And Dion said, oh, no, you don't, you call me Dion. Don't call me Dion. You know, you don't call Nick Saban, Nick. And he said, yeah, I do. yes, I do. <laughs> and then it went back and forth. You know, it was, I thought it was kind of tongue in cheek, but then I seen Dion was kind of, uh, he looked like he took it personal. I mean, I get it, I understand it, but then at the same time, this is, goes back to uh, this whole thing of looking for acceptance, and, and and I could go on and on about that. You know, when you know who you are, I I don't care what you call me, but you gonna respect me. I think he, um, Dion took it a little bit, and I I can understand it. You know, I, I think the race thing. I think sometimes we just we take it a little bit too you know it just goes i think we just look for too much well you know what i'm saying let me give you a little context of it. It something that i heard yesterday and maybe the reason why um come to find out not that particular news reporter but the the paper the clarity i'll find it here in a second they wrote a bad article on a dude that um Jackson State was looking at to sign mm. all in some sexual stuff mm. and it like a bad article about him like four or five days prior and okay. I can see you know D Dion you know he airs his irie towards that dude who didn't write the article but he but he's part of that paper it's part of that newspaper got it okay so oh. that's what this is about so, uh, so my, my question to you guys, start with Mike, what's, what do you think about the media and, and um, sporting um, personality, the athlete? Where are we at with this and where do we need to go with it? And is it necessary? What's your thoughts? And, you know, the whole, I haven't thrown in the whole Naomi Osaka <laughs> um, story too. What do, what do you think about that? The media is a necessary evil. I mean, you love the media when they write it, when you have a good game and they want to talk about how dedicated and whatever, whatever you are and how much money you make. But then they also have to tend to be a little extra. They do tend to poke sometimes. So, I mean, you got to take the good with the bad. You got to have an understanding and you got to hold yourself in a professional light to a certain, like you got to, block yourself well you know what if I, if I, i'm being politically correct let me keep it 100 Thank don't you. do nothing you don't want seen or reported <laughs> like come on how hard is that how hard is that you gotta play the media you you conduct the media is like a pack of dogs you have to once they smell fear they dive in or once they see something they're gonna report it don't do nothing you don't want to be See and, do it. And Mike, you make up a great point. A lot of people, um, now that he doesn't play anymore, a lot of people, a lot of some of the media do shade at Derek Jeter because he said a, he did he did a lot but said nothing. If I if, right, you know what I'm saying? You know, you ask Jeter at the game, hey, what, what do you think about um wetland blowing that game? Hey man, you know, our guys they come every day to give it hundred percent, and you know, Johnny, you know, he'll be out there again tomorrow. You know, Derek is never gonna say nothing controversial, stupid, or crazy. And like you said, if you give the media something to what you call it, 
they to to if you give them some fuel for fire, they are absolutely, as you said, the pack of dogs. They're gonna pounce onto the red meat that's in the middle of the circle. So sad. And so you know, don't give them nothing to do. Um, Da, what's your thoughts, media? We talk about this all the time. I think it's just the fact that nowadays media is so much different, so much more different than what it was for most folks like a Dion or uh, whoever coming up, man, because guys were... Um, Hi, Rhonda. My, my, my wife is scratching the dog's stomach. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, the the um, like we said, like these guys aren't journalists anymore, and they they say stupid stuff. You know, how many takes do we have of, of Bill uh, um, Belichick not even really answering the questions because the the reporters is asking stupid things? So I understand, like Mike said, people you need them. They're part of it, but I think sometimes athletes kind of come at them like, yo, dog, you expect me, and coaches, like, y'all expect me to do my job. Why don't y'all do yours and be professional? It's on, it's on the Cincinnati. Bill, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, on the Cincinnati. On the Cincinnati. But you have, you have some, like, Popovich. Popovich, Popovich is get really brushly and very, very ornery with the media. So he takes, you know, yeah, he goes hard at them because they let him. Yeah. yeah. You know, I don't, I don't think it's something that's, uh, I think that they also need to have a situation where those writers need to also um, hold coaches accountable. Like, you know, like, dude, you ain't going to talk to me like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a professional too, Pop. Like you just can't. But guys don't do that, man. You know, so both sides of it. You know, you know me, I'm that if you bend over, you're gonna get fucked. So like that's always been my thing. Don't bend. Don't bend. It's so not easy if you just don't, don't bend don't. over, man. You know, that's both sides of it. So, you know. Go ahead. D dub, you there? Oh yeah, yeah. No, go ahead. He was uh, he was um Wanted to ask. I'll, I'll go after E. Go ahead, E. Oh, I was just going to say real quick. Um, what I agree with, you know, what everybody said, especially with Mike. Um, as far as you know, you got to hold yourself, you know, accountable. You know what it is. However, you know, we we here on Sports Chasers podcast always talk about accountability across the board. So I say, why? And we've spoken about this countless times off the air. Why is it that nobody is holding these writers accountable for the shit that they type and the shit that they put out when the shit is totally incorrect? There's nothing done about this. And then people look at the look at the player. Oh, well, you you know, you you being Aggie, they they wrote something, you know, that's how they are. That's that Manny being Manny. No, no. Yeah. Look, all these sports, sports and, and media goes hand in hand. Yes, we get that. So how why is it? Why does it seem like it's so hard to sit both entities down and have some kind of middle ground? Hey, if you guys want respect, we want respect too. We just trying to, we trying to do our job, trying to do your job, this and that, the third, boom, boom, boom. So you have a middle ground. So this, this, this quote unquote disrespect, Dion, wouldn't happen because you already know, hey, um, um, you go through this coach here. He he doesn't mind being called by his first name. This coach here, you know, he he whatever the case may be. If you wanna if you wanna call a guy by his nickname or this and that the third, or you have uh, a better ties with said coach or said GM or whoever, then 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 so be it. But nothing nothing is ever said. Pardon me. Nothing is ever said about these um, quote unquote journalists <laughs> journalists that um make these uh. You know, they come up with these uh, bogus um, stories. Nothing to say. And, and Eric, let me just ask you, because like, you brought up something I was watching. And um, and they were asking, like, so, and this is probably one of the biggest beefs, like, in all sports, like, should it be 
the journalists that get to put dudes in the Hall of Fame in the All Star games. Because, like, a lot of times, those guys have a bias. And it's, it's you know, they show their bias. Like, I, I'm not going, I'm not afraid to say it. Like, Stephen A will go after Kyrie and just say uh, uh, KD. Whereas he'll let other players get away with doing something. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So, dudes have a bias in the media that impacts. You know the, the athlete. That's why, you know, uh, uh, Levitard threw away his uh, uh, baseball um, uh, vote for the Hall of Fame. Cause, excuse me, because he was like, "Yo, he knows that there are dudes that didn't vote guys in because they didn't like them, yeah. not because of the way they played, not because of skills, just because they did not like them." So well, let me let me ask this because I'm. Unfortunately, I'm not all that uh, informative on it. Um, is it just the writers that have this uh, this vote, or is it from a different? Uh, is it just mainly writers, or is it coming from other sources? I think it's depending on the sport, right? So, football <laughs> is writers and players, but I don't I don't know how that play like, it breaks down some funny way. I think. Um, basketball, I don't know. Uh, yeah, how? I don't know. How. I know baseball is just the it, writers. It's football just the writers. Is, is football, you're right, D.A., it's, it's the writers and the players. They collaborate and they somehow come up with that thing. Yeah, well, hockey, I'm not sure. well, hockey, I'm not sure, and basketball, I'm not sure. Well, what I, mean. I would say to that, then, is then you should have a committee. They make a committee for everything else. Well, why don't you make a committee of former writers and former players and for each sport and do it like that. If if you already have biases in in with uh with with the writers or whatever, then you need to kind of um um tr- decrease that power that they have. I yeah. think uh, I think the football it's the like Hall of Famers. They'll have a committee of dudes mm. that's already in the Hall of Fame yeah. uh, to put other dudes in. So I uh-huh. mean, because if you just have writers, then like To would have never gotten. It. Oh yeah. Like, it's, I mean, second numbers, you know, of all time. Like, his numbers were better than Randy Moss's numbers, folks. Like, you know, I, I, I know dudes say what they want to say, but his numbers were better than Randy's. Wow, shit. So, you know, like, what was the issue? Yeah, what's the issue? D-Dub, you had something? No, nah, I was just saying, man, this, I think this shit is stupid. I mean, you know, to be honest with you, because I've I've seen interviews where people use first names, last names, whatever whatever the case is, depending on who you know what type of relationship you have with said, said coach or whatever the case may be. So I don't know what the power stroking was the other night was all about. Well, and since you brought it up about this about. Again, it was about some newspaper article, uh, you know. So you know, I think there it, there has always been a, a adversarial type thing with the players, writers, writer players don't like what writers wrote about said player, uh, you know, or the you know, uh, stuff is taken out of context. Uh, they or the writer leaves out a, a a piece and it makes it sound like the the player is saying X Y and Z, you know, and all that needs to be nipped in the bud. It needs to be correct. Everybody needs to be professional. Getting back to you know, it's you should it should be a professional standard. And you know, as far as uh, you know, the biases and stuff, you know, whatever happened to objective reporting, objective, the facts of the matter of. Barry Bonds hit 700 such and such. You know what I'm saying? They they killed that off. You're right. It's opinions now. So now we're in this opinion-based thing, and and that's why we get in trouble, because it's all about opinions, and people get upset because of said person's opinion, and they can't handle it, and then they get mad, and then, you know what I'm saying? You're... And um, did you finish your thought? The I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean the the fact of the matter is, once you, you know, if you if you 
figure out the media and understand how to answer questions. When you hear a stupid question, Kevin Durant did one better. It was great. It was fantastic. He looked at the dude and was like, really, dog? How you expect, what you expect me to say? You know what I'm saying? It's, you know, a stupid question, either say no comment, next question, and move on. Don't give them nothing. Get, because you know it's stupid. It sounds stupid. Yeah. I'm not going to answer that question. I one, have nothing for you. One reason why I hate um, Super Bowl media day, because you have it's, to, it's stupid. Yeah, Especially exactly. you get these reporters that are not right. actual cover the game every day or every Sunday or whatever the case may be. These are just some casual reporters. Since we got casual fans, we got casual reporters that want to come in and, and ask, you know, shock, shock, jock questions. Lesser charge reporters. Lesser charge reporters, yes. So you know, and and and, and that's and that's the problem. A lot of it, and we got TMZ and all this other. Shout out to TMZ. I ain't got no no nothing against you, but it, it's it's a problem. It's definitely a problem. So that's my that's my thing with this whole thing. And you know, I think it's just you know something stupid. It's one thing if you. I mean, I think everybody in a in a right mind respects Deion Sanders. I mean, you have to be a fool if you don't know who this man is and what he's done. He hasn't done nothing as a coach, so I can understand that. But as far as, you know, his playing days, we understand he does get – We, I think he's well-respected, but he's had, he has to understand that he's going into a different realm. He's a coach now. So, you know, he, he's going to have to prove himself as a coach. Just because you was Dion prime time doesn't mean it translates to prime time coach Dion. Don't Let's work see. like that. Let's Look see. at Michael Jordan. Yeah, I was about to I'm say just that. saying. Yeah, the greatest of all time, the goat. Because we know it's been spinning their will. Great players generally are not great coaches. Okay. It's been true, we've true. seen it over and over and over and over. That's true. We're gonna we're gonna wrap it up. I'll just have my thought on this. Um, we absolutely some of these things with the media they have become opinion based instead of just. If you remember back in the days when people used to read a newspaper, now everything's digital. Um, when I used to read the Daily News and the New York Post, there used to be in the middle of the paper, it used to be the editorial section. And that's where you went to get what was the opinion of said editorial person or in sports or whatever was going in the, on in New York City. But the first couple pages, whether it be on the sports side or the news side, which is on the back pages, yo, they just say, hey, Yankees beat Cleveland six to three. Ron gives you pitch seven and a half. Um, gave up one run. Goose Gosses came in and gave him blah blah blah. That was it. They told you what happened. But now somehow the lines got blurred and everything now has become opinion and maybe TMZ or fact based. And now we're fact checking and lines are blurred. Anyway. Hey man, great show tonight. Great show. Great, 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 great show, man. I'm um glad that everybody was able to make it. DA, he he um came out there to the to the on deck circle, man, and made his way, man. I'm happy that he's um doing well, doing better. Um, Mike Mills, Mike Mills, where can we be found out, sir? Oh God, he's about to get fined. We can't hear you, Mike. Oh, ten dollars, not five dollars. Ten dollars. The guy that talk about the fines, man. Yeah, yeah fine, man. Yo, 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 yo. Uh, you can't yeah, 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 yeah. Fine her. <laughs> listen. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. We can be found wherever podcasts can be found at on whatever streaming service you prefer. May that be Apple. May that be Spotify. May that be somewhere else. May that be SoundCloud. We could be found there. Can also be found on your major social media platforms of Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Sports Chasers Podcast. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, we're going to start with partner partner shots. Um, we'll start off with Da. Da, what you got for us, brother? Da, are you there? Yeah. Oh, okay. There you Trying go. to get off mute. Uh, everybody, peace. Um, enjoy each other. Enjoy life. And you know, every day do better. Thank you, DA. Appreciate you, bro. Um, D Dub, what you got? Yo, be great. Uh, we also got the Olympics starting tomorrow morning. Uh, 
if they if they still play it, if everybody ain't got COVID, if they don't shut it shit down. So you know, we um, need the Olympics. Yeah, no, you know, China says no. <laughs> China said they y'all need to get the fuck up out of here. That's what they really said. But uh, anyway. Yeah, I say that, and I, I, was, right. and I said, "God bless y'all. <laughs> have a, have a good night." Uh, the angry one, James Eric. What's up? Hell, bad. Great show, fellas. As always, man. Again, as I normally say, yo, man, look out for your fellow man, woman, child, and earthling. And uh, yo, man, it, it 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 doesn't take much, man. Yo, but. Yo, keep your eyes out on certain things that go on, man. It's it's it's, it's feeling creepy again outside, man. So keep your eyes out, keep your eyes peeled on on certain movements that go on, man. I ain't, you know, that, that could be sports, it may not be sports, but keep your eyes out, man, because uh, it's it's getting it's getting spooky out here. But uh, yeah, man, yo, everybody love one another, man. Watch out for one another, man. We can we can do some things, man, for real. That's right. That's right. Thanks, James. Uh, Mike Mills. Shout out to the brand we know and love Saturday. Shout out to them. Uh, shout out my boy Dante D. Vincenzo, aka the Villanova 2018 championship game champion. Most valuable <laughs> player in that game. He didn't get to play in this finals due to injury, but he got his ring. So shout out to my boy. He got his ring. And yo, wait, we had injuries to, to the Milwaukee? Oh, yeah. Man. You know, Giannis was, was, was hurt. hurt. You know, D. D. Vincenzo was, was out since the first round. Oh, but they still yeah, won the title, saying. though, right? Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. We don't have a shout out to shout out to D Duff for interrupting my part and shot. I'm um, sorry, man. I'm just so happy that this NBA final <laughs> shit is over. Bro, Amen. Man. Jesus Christ, man. And Jesus just to piss me. and just to piss him off, shout out to. Le- <laughs> 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 Yo, man, go take your tequila uh, ass and, and, and man, forget it, man. Don't even. I'm not even going there, man. Go ahead, man. Hey man, my, my my part. Started. I had the same as you, though. Hey man, uh, do we really need the Olympics? Hey man, whatever, man. Shout out to those that are there. Just be careful, be safe. Um, I know they need COVID. Home. That COVID coming. Volleyball needs the Olympics. That COVID coming. Yeah. <laughs> that COVID coming. <laughs> that, that Delta is going to be Delta. What, what what's the Delta? Uh, yeah. Delta, 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 like Delta, Delta, Delta that come across my Sony screen. Delta. Yeah, Delta. Be Delta. out. We got to be locked back in the house. Y'all ready yeah, up? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, y'all go ahead. I ain't never left the house, so I'm good. Yeah, y'all y'all ready go. up? Y'all both folks, you know, we need sports yeah, and all this other shit. Shout out Yo. to the work from home crowd. No yeah. doubt. No doubt. I was doing yeah. that before COVID, but. Yeah. Shout know, out to them, because they about to be yeah. back in the house. Yeah, right. yeah. Let's, let's yeah. understand one thing, fellas. Like, real talk. Like, I done heard the motherfuckers dying from a lot of things. Uh, 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 on Looney Tunes, or Anvil fall on you. Uh, you know, all kind of shit happened, man. Right? But y'all got to tell me the last time you heard somebody die because they couldn't watch a baseball game. Fact. Or they couldn't watch a basketball game. It ain't that important, y'all. And this is what we do. And we love sports. But we said it last year. We said it. I, I hey, can do without told, it. We told them. Honestly, I didn't. <laughs> The bubble was fun, but I could have did without the shit. I was, I was like, basketball over the week. Knows I could have. I was like, basketball yeah. over. I don't care. Listen, the basketball players didn't go. So right. come on, man. Like the dudes that do that didn't go. Hey, Dave, what I told you earlier today, I would have found a whole lot of other things to do, like going yeah, swimming, going yeah, hiking, yeah, yeah. go yeah, camping. I could have done a whole lot of other stuff. Pandemic oh, not- season two starts soon. Oh, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, this, it, this, is, this is going left. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, oh, You put bro. the music on? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He going to shut our mics off. There, 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 there. Oh, the music guy. <laughs> Myself. I'm Kevin Del Hoy, your host and moderator. DA, Dory Albrighton, Mike Mills, D-Dub, Daryl Warren, James L. Warren, the angry one. Yo, this is Sports Station Podcast, man. <laughs> Yo, I had to, I had to get him, man, because he was gonna go crazy, man. Yo, y'all, see, we see y'all next week. Y'all be blessed. Hey, man, shout out to the locks and the dipset. That's gonna be crazy. Shout out to the verses for yeah. the locks and dipset. Yeah, that's gonna be definitely cool. Man. When is that next yo, week or the week yo, after? Ti and Eminem, who y'all got? I could care less. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
I got a nap. That's what I got. Yeah, yeah, I could care. Yeah, I'm and doing what? Yeah, that's, that's, that's the rumor mill. But anyway, yeah, I'm, 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 not, I'm not moved versus, by neither one. That versus is getting out of control. Like they got shit on there. They like, just don't matter. I, I, they <laughs> don't have no structure. They Nothing. need weight. Yeah. They need to do this shit like boxing. They need weight classes. 